What's up, everybody? Welcome to a unique all play this time around from all of us. My name is William D. Bakary, and today I am with two of my favorite gentlemen on the face of the planet, especially when it comes to video games. Off to my right here, I have Mr. Tim Sharp. Hi. And off to my left, I have a hard time pronouncing your last name, Ryan. Bunadara. Bunadara. Ryan Bunadara, off to my left here. We're going to go and recap some of the best games of 2017. We're also going to talk about speculating into 2018, talk about what we liked especially um, in terms of gameplay, design, story. We're going to touch on all those elements today. And narrating for us today is our one and only, my PIC. What up? My ace boom coon, Brian Karsten. All right, so I'm going to actually hand it to him, and he's going to start with questions, and we're going to kind of go from there. Does that sound good, panel? Yes, that it works. does. Cool, yes. let's do it. All right, everybody. So, guys, yes. what game series would you like to expand in 2018? Mm. I'm going to defer to you guys. Oh. Expand. <laughs> Expand in 2018. Um, I'd like to see Cyberpunk come back. Cyberpunk 2077. Maybe that would be fun. I hear rumors about that. I think CD Projekt Red is actually going to be um, developing that game. I think you're right. I'd like to see that really come to fruition here in 2018. I don't think we're going to get... Death Stranding. I think that's going to be a 2019 game. And that's early. Yeah, right? Exactly. Maybe 2020. I don't know. But um, be, yeah. Cyberpunk. That has been a game that really, I think, could blow a lot of people away. Um, especially if done right with the right care and concern. So. What uh, is the game style on there? I don't think they've disclosed too much other than it's probably like a third person over the shoulder kind of action game, but yeah, okay. I don't know. Um, I would imagine so since that's what they're known for with the, the Witcher series. Yeah, exactly. Like, okay. We can only speculate. Sure. Yeah, exactly. So, But for me, I would definitely say Cyberpunk 2077. So, Excellent. So, which series should end in 2018? I have so many that I don't know where to start. Just lay them all out. Well, you said to end. Um, so these series, I feel like they recycle the same, play, like, more or less gameplay elements almost every single year or biannually. Uh, Dynasty Warriors needs to stop. Madden needs to stop. Um, Pokemon kind of needs to stop because they need to revolutionize, like, what they're doing. Essentially, it's a rinse repeat with, like, some uh, modified gameplay elements. But overall, it's still the same type of game every single year. What about with sure. the Switch coming out and everything like that? Do you think Pokemon could be really revitalized in a proper professional fashion where like old school fans could really get back on board with being like, I'm excited about a fucking Pokemon title? I think it can. Um, this comes with a little bit of a caveat. I think if they actually did rinse and repeat the same formula onto a Switch, that would be okay just because that's kind of like your starting point with that new platform. Right. So from there, I think it's fine, but if you're gonna go from <clears> there, uh, I think they really need to step it up. Um, but those are the main ones. Uh, are you talking in terms of like a Pokemon RPG or everything else that they've been doing? Um, mainly just uh, Pokemon RPG. Like I can't really speak that much to, to, to Go or like Detective Pikachu. Sure. Which yeah. I think is kind of interesting. Does that even have a Bejeweled title now? Yeah. Girl, yeah. Jesus. <laughs> There's a Pokemon uh, live action slash CG movie in the works, isn't there? With like Ryan Reynolds who's like voicing Pikachu or something oh like that. It, that's not any way related to uh, Pikachu speaking. In English, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I just, oh. I just know, you know minor things about this. Oh, it's, it's tough to watch. Um, <laughs> and then the last one, this has been a long time coming, I think Call of Duty needs to stop. Mm. I think they do have a wealth of talent, but when you're expected to churn out uh, a game year after year, um, we kind of, I don't know, that maybe falls by the wayside. I think Battlefield does a good job of putting out a game every two years to yeah. give them enough time to really... Uh, I don't know, build up that suspense, build up that hype, and also put out a good quality product that isn't so much a rehash of what they did previously. You think developers yeah. like Infinity Ward and um, Sledgehammer would benefit significantly if Call of Duty <coughs> was like like what, you know, like uh, Assassin's Creed is basically done. They take a step back or do it every two years or whatever and whatnot. Um, they could. I mean, we look at Assassin's Creed Origins, um, and that's, I feel like, is a revitalization of the series. Yeah. As, like, it's... When you look at that compared to Unity, which isn't that far removed, right. Unity was yeah. just terrible yeah, that's true. on, on a lot nice. of different fronts. And finally, um, I, I feel like they, they've given like their full effort. Yeah. I don't know if it's Assassin's Creed that I'm thinking of specifically, but I feel like every other entry in the series has been really solid. Um, we look at 3 being really good. Or was it 3? Um, the Native American one? That was 3. Actually... We look at three being really bad, yes. and we look at the pirate one being really good. Well, Black Flag was great. Yeah, mm -hmm. Assassin's Creed two being really good, Unity being, Unity being terrible. 
Um, then the London one was fine. Yeah. It was serviceable. Uh, it was great, but it was serviceable. So, hmm. yeah. When he said die, Tim, in 20... When he said not come uh, around ever again. Die. Um, I was... Actually, the first thing I thought of was Assassin's Creed. Really? Actually, yeah. Okay. But don't you enjoy Origins? Yeah, you, you've, uh, had, no, you've had a good time yeah. with Origins. <laughs> this year, haven't you? Origins, yeah. yeah, a little... It, yeah, but... Well, um, we'll get into the you know, top five later. <laughs> I like you, yeah. but you need to die. That's how I <laughs> interpreted that. Exactly. Maybe uh, end on a high note. I'd oh, say. okay. So, yeah. Okay. Right. Because, yeah, I, I played the majority of those titles and only really enjoyed a couple of them. That's so, fair. Yeah. That's fair. Totally. How many other places can you um, land in that bale of hate? Japan. You know? Japan. Exactly. Japan. That's, that's true. Just, Japan, just give it to us. Yeah. That's, give us Japan. Give us a Japanese we do want that. Screen, please. <laughs> please. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe one more, like maybe that. That should have been. And then, yeah. and then. That should have been the answer to our last question. Like expand on. It's like oh, it's not screen Yeah, that's right. Boom. Yeah, that's right. Take a samurai's take uh, death out, perhaps. You know. Right. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. It'll, it'll survive. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we cool. Excellent. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Which developer showed up in 2017 and surprised you? Mm -hmm. I'm you didn't show up. I'm gonna sound like a total tool for saying this, but who developed Cuphead? Um, Ooh, yeah. I thought that was a mic it was published by Microsoft as a first party title, but I don't okay. know who the dev was. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm on board with whatever. Yeah, Cuphead was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, it kind of came out of left field. It kind of put together a couple different platforming elements that I thought worked harmoniously pretty well together. It was kind of like playing Mario and like Shovel Knight together. It was kind of cool. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I really kind of enjoyed what that had to what that had to bring to the table. And yeah. like I said, the developer is completely escaping me right now. Um, but that's my vote, okay. I think. Yeah. Uh, I would have to say Gorilla. With, with Horizon. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I can't remember their previous title off the top of my head. Killzone. Yeah. Kill all, all the yes. Killzone. Killzone. Yeah. Yes. Killzone two. Killzone three. Exactly. Killzone Liberation. So. Yeah, that <laughs> was, Killzone Shadow. That was definitely quite the jump. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, if you will. Yes. But, um, Big Killzone fans over here. So yeah. yeah, right. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Totally jaw dropping in that in that sense. So. Yeah, actually, I need to I need to restart that game. I'm going to talk about that in my top yeah. five. But yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, I would have to agree with Gorilla just because like I had a lot of reservations. Like Killzone is, I don't know why I really like it as a as a video game series. Like it's really impressive and it tends to push the boundaries of what the console is capable of graphically. Right. Um, but in terms of like pushing the game industry forward, not so much. And I feel like Horizon Zero Dawn really accomplishes accomplishes that. Yeah. So. I agree. Yeah. Good answers, guys. Oh, yeah, you. for sure. What was the worst game in 2017? Oh, fuck. There's uh, a lot of bad ones. What? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand this off to you guys. I'm going to think about this one for a little oh. while. Oh, cool. Yeah. The thing is, is like I, I avidly try to avoid terrible games, but mm. you... Ah, uh, man. So do I, but I did, I did jump into one and passionately was... I don't know. Ooh. Um, what's the... Uh, I'm liking right now. It's okay. Um, clear, clearly, yeah, clearly, you were very upset. Yeah. Yes, you were so confident <laughs> oh that it's affecting your life. Uh, Destiny speak. 2. I, oh. I was fooled by Destiny 2. I wanted it so bad. And it, it, it <laughs> the light did not shine on it. Yes, yeah. uh, I know a lot of PC, really hardcore PC gamers that were mm -hmm. like, yeah, I'm finally excited to see Destiny come to come to a PC. And, mm -hmm. and then when it got there, it was they just... They were just fucking yeah. upset, and I understand why. I mean, they, they did... Like the reason why I was excited and then ultimately upset. So I wanted I wanted at least sixty FPS. I wanted the, the glory of like full resolution. Sure. And I got that and I wanted to be able to, to play a first person shooter with a mouse and keyboard. And I got those things, but when it came to multiplayer, it uh, suffices on just the the very lowest minimum. Like there was no rank mm -hmm. system, um, the the stat tracking was really pretty horrific. It was hard to I don't know, find any decent sort of game modes that maybe ah, it's it's hard to say. It just barely fulfilled what what multiplayer gaming should be on a first person shooter front it felt like how a lot of ps2 <clears throat> shooters were set up like from several generations ago and i think it's it's pretty unforgivable especially since we see what overwatch is doing right now which is yeah. top dog in terms of this is how you stat track this is how you set it up to be competitive yeah. and maybe they didn't want to do that maybe they just wanted it to, to be an add-on to um a really like lush and rich and vibrant like single player game which I can't speak to because I don't touch that. But yeah, if, if that was the the idea, then yeah, I guess it is technically multiplayer on the very yeah. lowest standards. Yeah. 
Speaking of lush and beautiful and extremely disappointing, let's throw Battlefront 2 out there. Um, <laughs> especially with those loot boxes, especially with all that garbage, all the fucking behind the paying wall yeah. shit that you have to deal with. Yeah. Um, Micros. People were really upset at the single player. <clears throat> I'm not going to dog on the single player because they put forth an effort to attempt to do something. I'm not saying it was a good effort, but the fact is is that they did something. It, was, it attempted to be interesting mm -hmm. and... Yeah, it was still interestingly disappointing. So yeah, we, it's, uh, Battlefront Five will be the Battlefront Five. <laughs> That'll be yeah. a perfect game. Yeah, yeah. We may not even get a Battlefront Three, so no. we'll see. You know what sucks about that? That uh, it takes the same naming scheme as an existing Star Wars Battlefront Two, which is Five. Which is the one of the better games ever. Yeah. One of the greatest Star Wars games yeah, ever. Yeah, man. The second to only maybe Jedi Outcast or Knights of the Old Republic. Like it's it's very mm. far up there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was disappointing in terms of like how it was marketed, how it was implemented, how it tried to essentially act like a cash cow. But I will say that from a gameplay standpoint and as like a, a graphical engine and like something to showcase graphics, it's really impressive. It's gorgeous. But, but it, it's hard to ignore these other things that really mar it from really being even a decent game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ugh. Next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that leads us directly into what was the best looking game of 2017. Well, go. yeah. I've got two answers yeah. um, and they're they're very different from each other. Um, we had already touched on one, Cuphead. Yeah. Cuphead is like like a Saturday morning cartoon from from yep. years past on yep. an acid trip. Yep. It's it's really hard to describe, <laughs> and like the sound effects mixed in with uh, the soundtrack itself, it evokes a certain emotion that ties directly to nostalgia, right. and I think that's uh, something that not a lot of games can accomplish. Um, but if we want to talk about like uh, like a modern day title. That, that has the best graphics because I feel like that's just an old school representation rather than what is today. Right. Persona 5 oh. is maybe the most stylish game ever yes. created. Um, every single transition. That's a bold claim. That yeah. Line. Every single yeah. transition, every single like menu animation and how characters interact throughout, it's like watching a, a digital version of a graphic novel and how it unfolds mm -hmm. is just, uh, I don't know how to, how to describe it, but it's, it's awe inspiring. Right. Tim? Um, I, mine would probably be a tie between Horizon Zero Dawn and Assassin's Creed Origins. Okay. Right. Um, just the large landscapes and like um, overall visual um, tone that they were able to achieve. I had my jaw dropping in several several moments on each game. So nice. Yeah. Nice. Very cool. Either of those. Yeah. And actually, Assassin's Creed Origins is they released like an educational version of the game, like without fighting. So. Um, Students can go in and do like the virtual tours of old Egypt and like the tombs and the really yeah, it's pretty cool. Because wow. I gave it 15 minutes and stopped, so that's right, yeah. really good to know. Go. That's yeah. really good. Maybe to know. Maybe you should have picked up the education version. Fuck, yeah, right? There you go, Seriously, yeah. that's where we're all going up. Um, you got the boring one. Too. Yeah, right. <laughs> I know you played Zelda a lot too, so yes. we'll, we'll talk about that later. Sure. But yep. yeah, that was that was interestingly beautiful in its own way. Mm -hmm. My vote is Hellblade: Senua's Sacrifice. Ooh. Uh, um, I can't say enough about this game. I was thoroughly impressed. Um, from basically like a second party developer to be able to charge $30 for a game that was beyond AAA quality, at least a good eight to 10 to 12 hour long single player campaign that deals with, you know, psychosis. I mean, it was yeah. awesome. It was very yeah. cool to literally have voices in your head. It, requires well it doesn't require i guess i shouldn't say that but it encourages you to play with headphones and that's definitely yeah. the way to go 100 percent. it's beautiful the overall landscapes are gorgeous the facial animation mm -hmm. as far as senua it's it's a like it's a developer she is literally part of that team and she's not an actor she's whatever they're like we need you for this role can you do this and she goes yeah i'll commit and it's one of the best performances i've ever seen in video mm -hmm. games ever um, she kills it. She nice. does a great job. So that's, that's my vote. That's a tall pedestal. Yeah, she, she does a great job. <clears throat> so next, Keep which game had the best backstory in 2017? Mm. Uh, game had the back best backstory. Um, I think the one that that immediately comes to mind is Horizon Zero Dawn. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you're already set in a, a post-apocalyptic environment that has mm -hmm. dinosaurs, that has a fascinating like polarizing main lead that is on a journey to like uh, a lot of like self-discovery as well as just find out more about what the hell is happening to the world yeah um that's just uh, a recipe for success mm -hmm. and i think they succeed on almost every single front yeah, yeah. and i think the depth of the storyline in itself <clears throat> like 
um, if you went into every single location, you could find all these optional, like, you know, small novel things about the history of um, the world and everything that happened before you get there. And it's just unbelievable amount of work that went into it. Yeah, completely yeah. uncontested for me as well, too. Mm-hmm. Horizon's my vote, for mm-hmm. sure, too. So, yeah, absolutely. Who was your favorite hero and your most hated enemy? Ooh. <clears throat> um... Mm, that's a great question. I think I, I think I'm gonna lean on Hellblade here a little bit as well too. I think being the female lead that she was and carrying the emotional depth that Senna was like had to endure, I think that she was kind of by far my favorite lead. Um, and then as far as like a villain, so to speak, um, it also goes to Hellblade because the villain itself and all this is all completely spoiler as well too, so we can kind of disclose whatever we want, but. It's all within her head. The the demon is within her head, and I think they did a fantastic job of really incorporating that. So, I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. mm-hmm. yeah. Man, this is just a big, like, advertisement yeah. for Hellblade, though. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. Yeah. I mean, it's in my top five. I'm not gonna say where it is until later, but sure. Right. Yeah. Hmm. So the the question was uh, best hero as best well and worst and yeah. most hated villain. Hated villain yeah. Um, this is somewhat of an oddball answer honestly i'm going to choose wink from breath of the wild there you go and, mm-hmm. and why i say that like this is one of the things that really benefits from uh being a very open world game um it lets you make your own type of link like it's yes. your own personalized link yeah. so your story that you choose to tell is so vastly different <clears throat> from any other any other person's playthrough um i know there seems to be something lacking in terms of just like an overarching story as well as uh like compared to other zelda games but it is kind of like the story that you choose to make it right. so yeah in that sense i think uh, link is a very good hero um but the opposite can also be said if you chose to play it in a board, very boring play style he is kind of terrible <laughs> he's kind of terrible he's a dude that just cooks yeah. like you can do that if you want he's gonna change his stuff in case he gets struck by lightning of course exactly you know? yeah, yeah exactly, if he's so. just a dude that wardrobe changes and cooks um, and if you were into both things sure it's great so maybe, that, maybe that's why I like it. Uh-huh. It's a basic <laughs> RPG. Yeah. It's basic. Now we're hitting home. Oh, shit, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Tim? Um, I would say the same link uh, for the hero, just in terms of, yeah, um, the range of things that you're able to do with him. Um, even, like, in the dungeons and the the, the secret uh, puzzles and all that, I just really enjoyed the, the ride of things, you know, floating around and all that. So yeah. and, um, The shrines were pretty cool, too. Yeah, shrines, yeah. What they had to offer, so. Mm-hmm. And... Um, I don't really have an answer for worst enemy. Uh, what's the What's the guy in uh, Origins? Because I have no idea. Um, Is he a pan in the ass? Can we no. choose, can we it's, choose a it's a bunch of dudes. It's a bunch of dudes. It's not just one it's singular like, yeah, guy or girl. Okay. Like all eight of those dudes that fell out of the horse. The whole Egyptian government. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. EA is the villain. I don't know. Yeah. Ooh, <laughs> yeah. Ooh, there you go. Went there. Next. All right, boys. EA. What is your top five games of oh 2017? Who wants to start? <laughs> I can go first, just Do because it. I have my, my list right Do off the bat. Yep. So, number five is The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Great, great choice. Um, it has to be in the top five. Ah, absolutely. Uh, it, it's hard to overlook. Um, I feel like it's very similar to that of The Phantom Pain, Metal Gear Solid Five, um, where you lack a little bit in story you make up for in game mechanics and overworld excursions. I understand your comparison. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So that's where I'm coming from. Granted, yeah. Metal Gear hits home a lot harder or like it resonates with me a lot harder than, than Zelda does. You but, might hold up real quick. Sure. Sorry. Pause. <clears throat> I'm gonna have you I didn't realize, but we're gonna actually restart that question. Restart that question. Okay, perfect. Good. These are still going. Yep. Okay, okay. Yeah, a completely different answer now. <laughs> are you really <laughs> <laughs> so so Fortnite. Okay. Right. We're gonna have to talk about Phantom Pain later by the way. So Fortnite. Okay. <laughs> and action. All right, so starting off the list, number five is The Legend yeah, of Zelda. Oh. Let me ask you again real quick. Cut. Oh, yeah. Dang. Yeah. 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 Bad take. Time for some tequila. <laughs> Shots. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is going really well, guys. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right, guys. You rolling? What was the best or your top... <laughs> <laughs> You're just killing SD cards. Every take is an SD card. Yeah, you bet. What was your top? Yeah. I can't even talk now. 
<laughs> buttery flaky crust. You haven't had anything to drink or anything. Buttery flaky crust. Buttery flaky crust. We're gonna have 9,000. You're never gonna figure out what's going Fuck. What was your top five games of 2017? Number five. The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Yep. Um, yeah, I, I think aside from being an open world game, because we've seen that done before very well, um, but this one, um, I think the idea that it encourages you to experiment and most things that you're like, I'm not sure if this will work, it ends up working. Yeah, and let's that, go there. And that first kind of feeling is, is a magic that a lot of other games I feel like want to capture but can't quite, and Zelda just strikes that on so many occasions. Oh yeah. Um, and I don't know how many hours it takes before that magic wears off, but there are plenty to be had, and yeah. that's what I appreciate yeah. the most. It's still it's going. Took me up yeah, it's still going. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. I'm at 120, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, so. what do you mean? It hasn't stopped. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, number four is Cuphead. Ooh, okay. Yeah. okay. Cuphead is one of the most polished games that I've ever seen, like from a presentation standpoint as well as a gameplay standpoint. I know it's not it extremely like complex, um, but even things like you can't play multiplayer online, it encourages you to play multiplayer mm. in person mm. to kind of like give uh, a throwback to games of uh, past. It's true. It's true. Good there's, choice. There's that. Uh, Mario Odyssey is number three. Ooh. That, that's, a recent, that's a recent play for me, but I was never really a big Mario guy. Um, I really liked like Super Mario Brothers up until the third one, and then as soon as it hit uh, Mario 64, it was just a different turn for the franchise that didn't rub me super well. I, really? Yeah, I thought they were great games, but I'm just, uh, I felt like I didn't need to play them, necessarily. Interesting, okay. Yeah, they went to get, yeah that's, that's cool. Yeah, okay. so, so like those, like I like Sunshine, uh, but like, uh, what was the last one? Galaxy. Galaxy one and two. Yeah, skip those. Yeah, skip those. Yeah, but now I I'm like, but now I'm back on, and they, I don't know. There's again, Nintendo seems to have this like hit nail on the head, but the magic of going from world to world and then seeing your stupid hat ship just plop out. It's uh, it's kind of like runway, and just then like you, demon possess everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's like oh, this is great. Yeah, demon possess. We're gonna throw hats on you, and you're gonna be mine. <laughs> right. Um. It's yeah. Crazy. Something about Mario. Um. It, it, it got me hooked back in the series. So. Cool. We'll put it at number three. Number cool. two, uh, Persona Five. Persona Five. Um. It it pulls off something that I've been waiting to see in video games for a long time. Which, if you've ever seen a good heist movie, it jumps back and forth between an interrogation room of the main guy telling a story about what happened and then you get to play through the story and see like hey this is how accurate it is and this is how they're lying and like which truth to believe so there's that and also who thought like playing as a high schooler by day and then playing as like a thief by night would be interesting people love that shit yeah people <laughs> love they it love that shit. and it's it's such a, a relatable thing it's like this is what we always wanted <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this, this is why i want to be in high school yeah. yeah and it skips all the boring high school stuff like yeah you get to go through it but it skips through all that and you get to go do cool shit at night and then everybody like doesn't know who you are they're writing about you on the internet and you get to see those forum comments but You've got to hang tight because that's your secret identity. Yeah. And I thought that was super slick. I dig that. Um, number one, Horizon Zero Dawn. Ooh. Um, why I put it up there is I feel like if you're going to be on the mantle of Game of the Year, you can't only have good graphics. You can't only have a good story. You can't only have good characters. You have to push the boundary of what gaming should be. So I think that does that on a multitude of fronts. Um, it is extremely polished. It has a female heroine. It, it gives a lot of folks... Um, like that icon that they can relate to and even if you don't care about the message of what she represents to the game as a whole um yeah if you ignore that it's still a badass game yeah. and she's doing still doing badass stuff you don't care about the female heroine or yeah heroine um there's robot dinosaurs it's kind of like it's kind of like how black panther was it's like if you didn't grow up as an african-american like could you relate to black panther maybe not directly but it's still a super cool marvel movie right so yeah i feel like it fits a lot of different like niche areas that haven't been addressed in video games before and just happens to be like a knockout type of game. And slaps polish all over all. Yeah. yeah exactly. It's like, oh, you don't care about this? We did everything else right, too. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That's a good list. Really yeah. good list, Ryan. Tim? Uh, my list has a bit of overlap, but there's a couple of different... It's literally the same list. list. <laughs> <laughs> Is it literally? Uh, no. I'll, go, I'll start with the uh, things that we agreed upon. Uh, Cuphead. Okay. Um, now, where does that rank in your overall, like, one through five? Probably five. Okay. Um, it just, just, I have it least, just I have says Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five Fortnite. For all of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what the heck? Jesus. Just because uh, I probably had the least exposure to that game. Okay. Sure. But again, like Brian said, it was extremely polished and um, had a lot of fun playing what I did. Um, Horizon Zero Dawn, uh, for all the obvious reasons he Number said. Number four? 
Um, no, oh, these aren't in order. Okay. Um, Don't you disrespect the house yeah. of Horizon Zero Dawn. Oh my god. I'm not going with the thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Ooh, Agreed upon you're not going to like me very much. Horizon Zero Dawn. <laughs> you um, disrespect Oh, yeah. Breath of the Wild, just for, yeah, the complete awe factor and the fact that the awe lasted for nearly 100 hours. Yeah, that's, like, that's, that's, that's true. That's pretty impressive in that's itself. Very true. Yeah, it's um, not bad. Then my two differing ones were Assassin's Creed Origins. Okay. okay. Um, uh, I think the Assassin's Creed franchise made a big comeback. In that, I hit all like the things that I really liked about the franchise. Yeah. Uh, the ma- the amazing looks, the the little quests, all the side things you can do, and um, it just yeah, I really love it. Um, nice. And Splatoon two. Wow. Splatoon yes. 2. Yes. And that might be very mm. divisive for many people. No, but, good for um, you. I really liked it. The style and the way the Splatoon. Just yeah. the the youthfulness it was portraying. I really enjoyed enjoyed that. Um, and then the gameplay itself, throwing, just throwing paint at each other. And I think it was, um, it's not a very def- um, well-refined game. And I think it did that on purpose, because you're, yeah, you're fucking liquid at people. So right. it's going to be difficult. And so once you get past that wall of being able to figure out how, how to play, it becomes really enjoyable. Now, did you play Splatoon, the first one? I did not, no. Did not? No. Okay. Yeah, I think that was a Wii U game. I'm not really sure. Like, yeah, I didn't touch the Wii U at all. Nobody actually bought the Wii U. No, you game. know, you know, I know no this one asshole did. did. Oh, 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 just just for Mario Kart 8, and then it sure. became deluxe, and then it won like best uh, best racing game of the year from Dice Awards, which is kind of fucked. But that's beside the point. Whatever. I don't know if you know. uh, you've noticed, uh, every major Nintendo console a successful one has had a Zelda game. Which one did Wii U? That's have? true. Well, I mean, Breath of the Wild did come out on Wii U. Yeah, after that. Yeah. Well, it was it was a co-release because the Switch got released and then technically yes. yeah. yeah. So I mean, it, it's much bullshit, but it did happen. <laughs> it did happen. Devil's advocate yeah. over here. So, yeah. All right. So my list. I'm gonna go in order from five to one. Um, fuck. Horizon's my number five. Okay. Well, and the reason being is because disrespectful. Yes, very much so. I spent fifteen to forty-five minutes with this game every single night. That was my problem. I oh, wasn't true. able to invest two or three hours into sitting down and mm-hmm. learning the mechanics of the game. Yeah. I understand yeah. how to play it. I expanded the map mm-hmm. completely in 22 hours, which was a big mistake because I have got fucked ever since. Yeah, so you have to take the Netflix route with that yeah. game, yeah, you and you got to go at it all at once. And Honestly, to be real with you guys right now, after we leave here, that's exactly what I'm going to go home and do. That's I'm going to go home and actually like start Netflix Horizon. I'm going to start Horizon over again yeah, because it yeah. deserves the credit. It mm-hmm. really does. I know it's a good game. It's polished. Mm-hmm. I have not been able to sink my teeth into yeah, it. Yeah, I haven't touched the DLC yet either. Yeah. So. Uh, Frozen Wilds or whatever it's yeah. called? Yeah. 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 Sorry to so, say though. Okay. Yeah. Number four. Resident Evil okay. 7 Biohazard you, you look, in virtual reality. You lo- oh. In virtual yeah. reality. You looked at me and I... I immediately thought, like, this is going to be a troll answer. Fortnite? Call of no, Duty? No, 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 no. It's it's definitely RE7 Biohazard. Oh, that game is so terrifying. And yeah. Even from, a, like, a, watching somebody play it, it's just it's something that I couldn't experience myself, but I can only imagine what a visceral experience that could have been. Yeah, and actually, if you go on our channel, we're going to have content uploaded for RE7 playthroughs of me and Brian actually playing through it. All right. Um, in virtual reality, nice. and that was a experience where... I've taken video games and obviously enjoyed them as long as you can, whatever and whatnot, but I think that actually knocked us into a different echelon in terms of gaming. Um, You are in that house. You are in that Baker environment, so to speak, and it is a very moving, very emotional, very tense, Mm -hmm. very real experience, and I loved every moment of it, every single moment of it. Number three, Hellblade, Senua Sacrifice. Of course. Mm -hmm. Um, I've kind of disclosed a few details here and there as far as why I really like that game already, but I'll just kind of hammer it home again. It is one of those special polish games that you really just have to play for yourself and experience because even the ending itself, like I, I don't want to give it away because I want you guys to play and experience it. I know it's all spoilers and whatever and whatnot, Mm -hmm. but it's one of those things where you just kind of keep going and it's a struggle and you don't know when it's over. And it's very exciting. It's very, very exciting. Okay. Number two, Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild. Yep. <clears throat> um, 
wow, good job, Nintendo. Good job, Nintendo. It took you a fucking decade to realize that you needed to put out an awesome Zelda game, and you did it. And it, mm-hmm. you guys took your time, and we're all very appreciative for it. The fact that, like you said, Brian, where you can kind of like explore, and you go and you look over like a horizon, and you see something that you're like, well, there's like two things there. I could go to point A, I could go to point B, or I could sit here for five seconds and explore this Korok seed or whatever it may be. Like, it was just so well done. Your world was at your oyster. You could do whatever you wanted. Yep. Number one is Super Mario Odyssey. And the reason it's number one is because it is the most polished, well-refined Mario game that I have ever played. Mm-hmm. Um, I was the big fan of Super Mario Brothers 1 and 2. 3 was awesome. 3 was an awesome, awesome game. And then they jumped to Super Mario World, which I was completely invested in. Okay, I that, see that. That game was my shit, so to speak. Mm. Um, that's what I grew up playing in Southern California on my SNES. Um, and then 64 obviously came out. And that yep. was a whole game changer as well, too. And it combines the best of every single Mario game and adds a little bit more on top of it. And that's why Super Mario Odyssey is my number one game. I What I imagine when you say Super Mario Odyssey, and like as you're describing it, do um, you know how when he goes from world to world, and as he's like traversing, like making that journey, he's looking out the window with his hat yes. and like seeing that world. Yes. And there's this, this joy and excitement on his face mm-hmm. and this like sense of wonder. I'm like, that's everyone that ever yes. plays Super Mario yes. Odyssey. Yeah. I'm gonna disclose a little bit like, <clears throat> so obviously you, you kind of, you go through all the worlds, you beat the game, you beat Bowser, blah, 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 whatever, whatnot. It <gasps> takes, <totally>. yeah, fuck, <gasps> you, know, you beat Bowser, what? Sure. It takes you back to Mushroom Kingdom where you have never been the entire game. It drops you back into Mushroom Kingdom, and you look around, and you feel like you're playing Super Mario 64 all over again. And it's completely polished. It's perfectly rendered in you know 1080p, 60 frames a second, and it doesn't it doesn't falter, which is nice. Um, and Nintendo polish for you, but it is. It kind of took my breath away, and it kind of made me tear up a little bit because it takes you back to, like I said, Mushroom Kingdom. And you can explore Peach's castle. You can have a whole other world and oh, all that sort of stuff. Man, that's so, like, yeah, super super spoilers if you haven't uh, beat, beat, beat Bowser yet. So. That's very Metal Gear esque. Yeah, going back to Shadow well, Moses. Exactly. Talking and talking to the big Metal Gear fans here. Yeah. So, cool. That runs out my top five though. That's interesting. I, I'm I'm very surprised that Breath of the Wild did not cut any of our top ones. Which that exclusively one game of the year, like, across the board for yeah. everything. Yeah, and I don't disagree with right. that at all, but right. it was such a tough year to come out on top where, like, any Persona or Super Mario or even, like, a near Automata coming out of left field could yes. have taken that number one spot. Yes. But, yeah, like, across the board, mm. the Legend of Zelda, it, it was hard to argue that, but... What, uh, a, what a good year for... Yeah. yeah. Shit. Like, what, a, what a great problem Shit. to have. Shit. <laughs> a good year for escapism yes. in general. Yes, right. exactly. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Feel indeed. like not leaving your house? Well, 2017 yeah. we got is going to be good for you. Who's our president? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. All right, guys. What is your prediction for best game in 2018? It's more like what's actually going to come out yeah, in right. 2018 what happen, without so being pushed back. Can we like have a quick, uh, maybe a recap of what may or may not come out? Yes, please. So, um, the ones that I remember off the top of my head. Um, we've got Nino Kuni 2. Yep. We've got God of War. Yep. Um, Uncharted is an undecided. Probably not. Mm, or do you think it's going to come out this year? No. Okay. Spider-Man? Yes. Uh, <laughs> Will you watch your tongue? <laughs> yes, because they've already said 2018. So uh, I'll say yes. I'll put it out there. Death Stranding. I say no. Unlikely. I hope, but probably 2018. Uh, unlikely. The yeah. Return of Metroid. Ooh, oh, Metroid. that's that's more promising than Death Stranding. I'll tell you. Um, I will say that much. Yeah, yeah I agree with you there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that one is either like a surprise Christmas, or yeah. or, or next year. Yeah. Um, Final Fantasy VII remake. Do we think that's going to show up this year? I've heard a lot of murmurs about it. Okay. So, I, maybe. I'm optimistic, but if they push it back, mm-hmm. it's a game that's so beloved that we're willing to give it the extra time. Right. Um, yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3, potentially. Yeah. Uh, yep. Bayonetta 3. Yep. And those are the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. I think we're going to see Bayonetta 3 from Platinum. I think we are. I think so. I really so. do. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a definite, like, stamp in the book as far as yes. Yeah, it's, a, it's such a solid addition, and also, like, them bringing back 1 and 2 on the Switch. Excellent start. Which I was the sucker who went and bought them on Wii U for one. Two. Oh boy, oh, no, yeah. I, I was I fucked up. It's okay. It's all right. We make mistakes. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Tim, what about you? Um, 
What do you want to see come back? <clears throat> see come back. Or not come or back. Like, no, no, uh, see, um, game of the year for 2018, yeah, right? Um, I think probably just because I'm most excited for it is going to be uh, Red Dead Redemption 2. Oh, oh man, you yes. took mine. Yeah. Damn it. I <laughs> Damn it. It's, it's okay. Gonna, I think it's just going to blow choice. us all away. It's going to be like the perfect game. So I mean, Rockstar I'm is just on a whole it. nother level than anybody else. Yeah. You know what I want to see really Rockstar do? Because obviously this game is going to just wreck in terms of sales and ratings and right. everything like that. I mean, GTA I, 5 is still yeah. selling. Yeah. This cash shit cow. This came out in 2013. Um, Are you kidding me? <laughs> you kidding yeah. me? This will make me personally very happy if it can really eradicate the Battle Royale category. You think they're just going to they perfect it or what? I think they might. They might. Because... Who, who who wants to play like as a bunch of cowboys and bandits like a hundred of us? Sign yeah. me up. Yes, yeah. literally everyone. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Red Dead there Redemption. Um, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, that's. I'm just gonna full disclosure. That's mine. One hundred percent. Yeah. This is Red Dead Redemption. Too, that's gonna so. be game, game of the year. Um. Yeah, I think that's that's most likely to get game of the year. Um. I think God of War is gonna do very well. I hope so. But, I hope they do a good job. Um. I hope Corey does a good job with that, man. I really do. Yeah, I, I think it's going to do very well, but in terms of how God of War has been received in the past, it's always been a good, like, A, A minus game. Like, yeah. that's kind of its its territory. If it can break out of that, this would be the year to do so because they're jumping ship with uh, different mythology. You've yep. got a kid in there. Uh, I don't know if that's good or bad. but right, it's, 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 it's a son with Norse mythology. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, so, exactly. But it, it's changing up the formula, and I think that's good for the series. I agree. I couldn't agree more. Angry Kratos mashing things for no reason Great. because he killed his family, and he's mad about it. Yeah, yeah why okay. not? Beard Kratos, yeah. uh, dad yeah. of war. Exactly. Dad of war. Yeah. Hashtag dad of war. Yeah. <laughs> You've heard it right here in all of us. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Is there any other random things that you guys can think of that you're really kind of looking forward to for um, 2018? I mean, Death Stranding, we've kind of talked about. I'm a huge, huge Metal Gear Kojima fan. I mean, yeah, I mean, Metal Gear Survive is just a fucking joke. But whatever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, not not touching that. No, neither am I. Yeah. Um, I. I think this is going to be the year that, that Nintendo Switch uh, really solidifies itself as, okay. a, as a legitimate console. Because it yeah. exists right now, and it's got a few very solid titles. But aside from that, the third party is a little bit lacking. Yeah. Once those guys come in, and then they keep uh, rolling out their first party titles like a Kirby... Like a like a Donkey, Donkey Kong, Kong, like a Donkey Kong, like a Fire Emblem is yeah. gonna hit eventually. Yeah. S- Smash, I feel like is inevitable. Oh, it's dying so, to happen. So once these things happen, and then you just put a cherry on top with with a uh, like a fully realized mm-hmm. Pokemon, um, it's it can only go up from there. Yeah. Don't give us a snap. Don't give us some fucking other bullshit. Hey, man. Give us a Pokemon. I. I, 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 love, I like Snap. No, I do like Snap. No, no, I, yeah, I, I, like I wasn't actually yeah. going to mention Snap. I was going to say Detective Pikachu. Like, you have my attention. For whatever reason, <laughs> Pikachu with a detective hat. Like, yeah, okay. all right. All right. Uh, see here, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, Yeah, that, a, a new Shin Megami Tensei game. Like, I feel like people are still fresh off Persona 5. To bring that in a darker environment and throw it on a handheld, I think it's going to um, be very successful. It. It uh, will bring the Switch away from being just kind of like a kitty console. Yeah. Like, it's getting Dark, dark Souls. Right. So, yeah. there, that's, it, a, that's a good start. It, 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 it has, has doom. doom. Exactly, yeah. Like, it has doom. Like, wait a second. Me? I think yeah. we're on to something. Right, exactly. What about you? Anything that really nope. that sparks your interest? Kind of yeah. touched like, everything? Nope, I don't like anything. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. I don't like shit. <laughs> I don't um, even know why I'm here. Right, exactly. Yeah. Why am I even here? Well, guys, thanks so much for joining with us today. This has been another All of Us All Play, talking about video games in 2017, the best of, and kind of speculating in the future for 2018 as well, too. Go ahead and like, subscribe, and share at the bottom of this as well. Um, If you have any questions for us, leave them in the comments below. As always, from all of us to you, we appreciate you being here. Ryan, thank you. Pleasure. Tim, thank you. Appreciate you. People. All right. From all of us to you, keep it real. Hey there, all of us community. You could be anywhere on the internet right now and you're here with us. For that, we thank you. Don't forget to share these videos with your friends, like and subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.